It is time to cast our votes. The opinions before us are many. Roland's, Frederica's, Benedict's. Which to choose? Approach the scales of conviction with your token at the ready. I agree wholeheartedly. You have my vote. I cannot be swayed. I'm with you. The scales of conviction will illuminate the path we've chosen. The way forward is decided. We will follow Benedict's plan and join forces with Esfrost to lay Hyzant low. A tumultuous meeting exposes a yawning chasm between Roland, Frederica, and Benedict's visions for the future. Yet only one will emerge victorious, for such is the custom of House Wolford. As ever, the scales of conviction have the final word. The time has come for judgments to be rendered and leaders to steel themselves for the outcome. We've chosen our path. We shall ally with Esfrost and strike at the heart of the holy state of Hyzant. So you would kiss Gustadol's feet and bribe him with salt? I cannot abide this idiocy. You will defeat Hyzant only to be conquered by Esfrost. We are well aware of Gustadolf's cunning. He shan't take advantage of us. You would ally with them only to stab them in the back later? If need be. Have you no shame? Says the king who would deliver his own people to Hyzant. Yes, for that is how we secure peace for the many at the expense of the few. You know that is not true. Hyzant will conquer all Norzelia if we give them the salt crystals. All will be forced to worship at the feet of the goddess and follow her orders. Just as the Roselle have at the source. I see House Wolford is determined to walk their path astride Esfrost. But as King of Glenbrook, I will not allow it. Lord Wolfort, I command you to march on the duchy and strike down Gustadolf. What? You remain my vassal. I dare you to defy me. Roland, your majesty. You are bound by nothing, Lord Serenoa. You are no one's vassal. What are you talking about? Now is not the time, Benedict. Lord Serenoa is not the son of Lord Simon. His true parentage is none other than His Majesty King Regna. You cannot be serious!
King Regna fell in love with Lady Destra, a commoner living in the Crown City. When it came to light that she was with child, King Regna bowed to pressure from the royalists and had Lord Simon take her in. She bore a son, who you know today as Sarah Noah, heir to House Wolfort. If this is true, and you are my elder brother, then you are not bound by my command. Hold! Roland is the one with the royal ring, is he not? Even if this story is true, is it not Roland who holds claim to the throne? Roland was not the only one entrusted with a royal ring. So you possess one as well, Saranoa. I do. It is genuine. There is no mistaking it. What Benedict says must be true. I've always admired you, Saranoa. I knew from the moment we met that you were worthy of respect. I always felt you to be my better, even as a leader. Yet I still felt a closeness with you I could never place. Now, at last, I have. Roland, I... All the more reason why I cannot concede to you now. Least of all to you, dear brother. Sarah Noah Wolfort, I challenge you to a duel. To the victor goes the crown. Pray let us think about this. On your guard, Sarah Noah. I do not say this in jest. Yuck! Yeah! Cease this quarreling at once! Stop them, Benedict! I cannot. They must settle this here and now if we are to move forward. Listen to Benedict. This is not your fight. Do you have the courage of your convictions, brother? <laughs> Roland, stop this madness. I have no desire to sit upon the throne. I only wish to aid you in protecting our kingdom, the only home we've ever known. I have no doubt. You've been a peerless friend. I would trust you with my life. But the truth has been revealed and our paths diverge. You said it yourself. There can only be one way forward. That has naught to do with our lineage. Our bloodlines need not be shackles. Shackles? Ha! I have fought tooth and nail to protect what you now decry. I know you have suffered, brother. How can you? You who had your father's love, the unwavering trust of your subjects, proved yourself time and again so effortlessly! I ask you to prove yourself once more! Roland, please! I have toiled in your shadow while you led House Wolfhorn to glory. I have revered you and envied you in equal measure. I long to be like you, and I long to claim victory over you. Just once. I am not worthy of such adulation. Nor am I alone the reason we've come this far. We are all in this together. I knew you would seek to erase yourself from our history if you knew how I felt. Don't you dare shrink from me! Stand and fight so I can best you! I have no will to fight you, brother. I want none of this. But life does not always turn out how we want. 
this, you and I are now keenly aware. You asked me to put aside my feelings when you talked of joining with Azimost. Now I ask you to do the same. Prove to me that you have what it takes to deal with Esrost and crush Izand. That you can cut out a part of yourself to do what you think must be done. Show me you can create this bold new future you speak of! Very well. The scales of conviction have spoken, and House Wolfwart shall heed their word. If you would stand in our way and seek to prevent us from walking the path we have chosen, so help me, as Lord of House Wolfwart, I shall cut you down where you stand. Yes! Let us see who is the better between us! On your guard. Seems it was me, dear brother. In the end, I cannot escape your shadow. Kill me. It is only fitting that it is you who strikes the final blow. What will become of Glenbrook? That is up to you. I leave the kingdom in your hands. You have the ring, the royal blood. And it was House Wolfort that reclaimed the kingdom. The people and the nobles will assent to your rule. So long as I am gone. This is no time to waver, Lord Serenoa. King Roland initiated the duel. The terms are his to dictate. Letting him live will only prolong our troubles. You think I do not know that? You ask the impossible. My friend, my brother, is not meant to die by my hand. You are cruel in your kindness, Serenoa. I have neither the constitution nor the fortitude to be king. I cannot lead as you can, as our father did. I saw the terrifying limits of my abilities and sought the sweet release of surrendering to a higher power. Would you have such a coward live? I've watched you confront these parts of yourself for as long as I can remember. I've watched you strive to better yourself, to better everyone. You had my undying loyalty and trust. Oh, how I admired you, my friend. How I longed to follow in your footsteps. and follow you did. But now you must overtake me. I shall. Just promise me one thing. Promise me that you will watch over me. Every breath, every step, every word from my lips. And the moment you see me stray, you will set me back on the right path. This I shall do, seeing as you bested me in combat. Farewell, Serenoa. May we never meet again as brother or friend. Not the parting I would have preferred, but as Roland himself noted, Life does not always turn out as we want. 
Not another word, Benedict. I do not trust myself to show restraint. My love. At least we have settled on a path forward. There is work to do. King Roland! Leave me, Huet. I cannot do that. Or have you forgotten that you are my one and only sworn liege? Then take this as an order from that liege. Serve Serenoa, as you once served me. I am the only one who need walk this path. Your Majesty. Dry your tears, Huet. It is unbecoming for a proud member of the King's Guard. How can you say that? I never expected our parting to be like this. I am sorry. But there is something I would tell only you by way of apology. My disagreement with Sarah Noah and hatred of Esfrost were no lies. I will walk this path, carrying these feelings with me, perhaps forever. But my unwillingness to ally with Esfrost runs deeper than a personal grudge. Is it because you cannot trust Gustadov? It is his idea of freedom I cannot trust. In a world of unbridled ambitions, people will stop at nothing to claim power. The strong will prosper, while the weak will struggle to survive. So if we join forces with Esfrost, then someday Glenbrook will... Yes. His ideals of freedom will inevitably create a clear division between the strong and the weak. I cannot abide by that. I do not think Lord Saranoa wishes for a world like that. Nor do I. But Benedict will stop at nothing to defeat Hyzant. Who knows what will happen once he joins forces with Gustadolf. I understand. You wish for me to stay and watch over House Wolfort. Yes. You must take care of Saranoa in my place. And Cordelia as well. You have my word. You needn't worry about a thing, Your Majesty. You were a loyal and true knight, Huet. And for that, you have my eternal thanks. I told you not to sneak up behind me like that. It's been some time since a bird came from Hyzant, hasn't it? Huh. So you were spying on me. Did Wolfort order this? No. Lord Saranoa is not the type to have his people surveilled. But as his retainer, I would be remiss not to keep an eye out for those who might intend him harm. I suppose there's no fooling you. Yes, I am Hyzant's spy. Do what you will with me. I fear neither torture nor execution. We would gain nothing by doing either. A plant may be poisonous or medicinal after all. Depending on how we use you, you could still serve House Wolfort. I am a human being. Do not liken me to a mere object. 
Even tools have feelings. You said it yourself, no? So you did hear me. You should understand this by now, Milo. Lord Serenoa would never use you, or any of us, as mere tools. Indeed, he is too trusting. He would be easy to poison, had I a mind to do so. Grant peaceful sleep to the wounded beast. What is the meaning of this? Should House Wolfort rise in opposition to Hyzant, Serenoa is to be killed. It's a coded message. I only just received it. My master sees me as nothing but a tool. Now that my identity has been found out, my life is as good as forfeit. My master disposes of tools once they are no longer useful to him, you see. But he cannot dispose of me if I dispose of him first. Then you will aid us. No. I will use you. I may be a tool, but I have my pride. I came here seeking power that I might protect myself. To avoid being disposed of, I needed to align myself with a strong house. You're a tough one, aren't you? As tough as a weed, and poisonous too. I wish I had never learned of my true lineage. I was happy being Serenor Woolfort, son of Lord Simon and Lady Destra. No matter whose blood runs through your veins, you are still yourself. Thank you, Frederica. But now Roland is gone. Someone's coming. It looks like Benedict. I am in no mood to speak with him. Let us conceal ourselves. Lord Simon, Lady Destra. Today I revealed the truth of Lord Serenoa's birth and drove Prince Roland from the city. Lord Serenoa will be crowned the king of all Glenbrook, but this is merely the first step of many. We will use the salt crystals to ally ourselves with Esfrost and defeat Hyzant. I will see to it that Lord Serenoa becomes the undisputed ruler of all Norzelia. He has the strength and character worthy of sitting atop this realm and I shall carve that path to the summit for him. He did not wish for the position, nor this power. But no matter how much he resents me, I will ensure his success. He shares your blood, Lady Destra, and as such, I refuse to see him at the mercy of others again. Why would you go so far? Lord Simon, you were a lord worthy of my life's devotion. You were an equal to King Regna in every way. You could have sat upon the throne, and yet... You resigned yourself to life as a vassal and took in Lady Destra at your liege's request. You two treated Lady Destra and Lord Serenoa as if they were no more than pawns to be traded about. Back then, I could not forgive you or King Regna. Lady Destra, even now, I find it hard to forgive myself for being unable to save you. Which is why I will make Lord Serenoa a greater ruler than his father or King Regna could ever be. This is my revenge against myself for being so powerless then. 
I will not repent. I will devote my life to atoning for my incompetence. Benedict cared very deeply for Lady Destra. No amount of regret will change the past. We have no way to go but forward. My lord, how do the nobles take the news? They were surprised to hear of Roland's disappearance, as well as of my lineage and intention to ascend the throne. But there was not nearly as much contempt or disorder as I had anticipated. I also explained that it was King Roland's own decision to abdicate, once he learned the truth. I think it may have been the royal signet that kept them so composed. They took it as proof that King Regna deemed Saranoa a worthy successor. Even if they had objections in their heart, they could not act upon them. There is not a soul in Glenbrook who can deny the might and exploits of House Wolford. Princess Cordelia would have been their sole chance to challenge his ascension, but she is already within our hands. Be that as it may, the people must see it as such. I will not be able to get their support should they think I usurp the throne. Precisely. In any case, it's hard to believe our young lord's truly the king of Glenbrook. I never coveted this throne. But we have chosen to ally ourselves with Esfrost and have driven Roland away. I shan't run from my responsibilities any longer. I will take up the mantle of king to serve both Glenbrook and House Wolfort. A fine resolve, Your Majesty. We stand with you now, as we always have. Thank you. Benedict, prepare for my ascension and our negotiations with Esfrost. Yes, Your Majesty. I will also continue working on our plans for Hyzant. We cannot afford to lose this battle. Do what you must. As you command. Several days later, Serenoa announces that he is the son of the late King Regna, and that Roland, having learned the truth, has abdicated the throne. All suspect that there is more behind the announcement, but House Wolfort has the support of many in the capital city, and so they accept his words. Thus, Serenoa Wolfort takes the throne as the new King of Glenbrook. The joining of House Wolfort and the Kingdom of Glenbrook is yet another twist in the ever-turning narrative of Norzelia. One which Hyzant and Esfrost look on with ever wary eyes. I see everyone is here. What might this sudden meeting be about? Minister Tenebris, you kept us waiting. Ah. My apologies. You were all summoned here to discuss the recent political changes in Glenbrook. King Roland has conceded the throne to Minister Serenoa. Apparently the two are half-brothers. What? So, this was not a hearing of my crimes. Do you know something about this, Minister Tenebris? No. What will become of Glenbrook? There are rumors that King Roland has absconded, but the people seem oddly composed about the change of power. 
Is this not a joyous occasion? With Minister Serenoa on the throne, Glenbrook becomes a vassal nation of Hyzant. Not quite. We had intended to use Minister Serenoa to pressure King Roland into giving him control over the Grand Norzellian mines. But now he has both the salt crystal veins and the entire kingdom of Glenbrook in his hands. Our window of opportunity has closed. Precisely. Any attempt to likewise pressure Minister Serenoa may result in us losing more than we bargained for. He did not strike me as the sort of man to bite the hand that feeds. He usurped the throne from his own master. We cannot afford to let our guards down. Indeed. Hear the Holy One's words. We must be wary of House Wolford. We will summon Minister Exham and his forces back to the city to protect our people. Understood. I will dispatch a bird to him at once. I will have our spies in Glenbrook discern Wolford's true intentions. We must get our hands on those salt crystals. If House Wolford dares disobey the Goddess, they must be exterminated at once. This is my chance. If I can bring glory to Hyzant and restore my name, soon I will be. I did not foresee Serenoa becoming king of Glenbrook. What became of the abdicated King Roland? Official reports say he left the capital to live a life of seclusion. But rumor has it that he absconded after losing a duel to Lord Serenoa. Roland concealed his identity and fought hard to reclaim his kingdom. He would not so easily relinquish the throne. The rumors are likely closer to the truth than the reports. So, House Wolford usurped the throne. I did not take Serenoa for a man who had cast off the shackles of servitude by force. How fascinating it would be if the caged hawk broke free to soar the skies. Without Prince Roland around, there is hope yet of restoring our relations with Glenbrook. Perhaps we could ask Lady Frederica to help us negotiate. Glenbrook holds the salt crystal veins in their hands. No amount of negotiations would end in our favor. A bird that has flown the coop must be shot down. Whether they perish or return to a cage is up to them. King Serenoa invites Archduke Gustadolf to Glenbrook in hopes of securing an alliance with the duchy. Gustadolf accepts the secret invitation and makes his way to Whiteholm Castle. However, the salt crystal deposits uncovered in the Grand Norzellian Mines are currently in the hands of Serenoa. A meeting between the two great rulers comes with equally great risk. What is the meaning of this, Lord Benedict? It is as I said. The Kingdom of Glenbrook will cease all business with the Norzelia Consortium. The related parties should leave Glenbrook immediately, and any assets remaining shall be seized by the Kingdom. This is madness! Not only will you cut your ties with Hyzant, but the Consortium as well? How do you intend to get your salt now? You needn't worry about that. So it's true. 
Glenbrook has mined salt crystals from deep beneath the earth. It is no business of the Consortiums. You dare slight us after all we've done for Norselia? The post-war accord said that someone must ensure the fair distribution of salt, and so we did. And we appreciate all your efforts. However, King Serenoa has no need for the Consortium in Glenbrook. The nerve of you people. Hysant will never forgive such insolence. Save your tears for the long road back home. The Consortium was only ever good for lining its own pockets. Which is far from fair as I see it. I see now. House Wolfort wishes to see the Consortium eliminated in its entirety. In that case, I will return to Hyzant, as you said, and report this outrage. Was it right to provoke him? Claris may use his underground connections to stop us. That was my intention. He will now bring disorder to Hyzant's unity. More importantly, the new Norzelia truly has no need for the Consortium and its control over Salt's distribution. The new Norzelia. The world King Serenoa would rule. I have formulated a plan to bring about that new age. But first, our negotiations with Gustadolf must succeed. Sir, Archduke Gustadolf's ship will be arriving any minute now. Thank you. The outcome of our negotiations hinges on King Serenoa's decision. I must speak with him, alone. The Archduke will be here shortly. Thank you. Our future rests on these negotiations, doesn't it? Have you read The Power of Salt? I have. Lord Dragan gave it to us before he died. It contains all he gleaned in his research on salt. I thought it might give us a clue as to how we can convince Archduke Gustadolf to aid us. I understand now just how much potential salt possesses. Indeed. It is not merely a seasoning for food. We have control over the salt crystal veins. We can use this to our advantage during negotiations. But this is Gustadolf we are dealing with. Pressure and intimidation will only cause him to bare his fangs. Negotiate poorly and we will end up swallowed by the duchy in the name of Gustadolf's freedom. What do you think we should do, Benedict? Before I answer, I would know one thing. Is it your desire to monopolize the salt crystals, Your Majesty? I have no desire to do so. That would make us no different than Hyzant. And seeing as Gusadolf sought to break the Holy State's monopoly, I doubt he would ally with us. But we will merely be used as pawns, should we give him the salt crystals. I have no intention of doing that either. Lord Dragan's answers shall guide us. I will use the salt to bring about a free and prosperous Norzelia, greater even than Gustadolf could. If I can prove that to him, I am certain he would join our cause. Precisely. You prove time and again you are worthy to stand atop the summit of Norzelia. I have a befitting strategy in mind. Lord Serenoa, would you allow me to negotiate with the Archduke? <sighs> Very well. We must have him on our side. And we shall.
Most intriguing. You once refused to bend the knee to me at this very spot, and now seek an alliance as King of Glenbrook. I could not have foreseen this moment either back then. Nor that you would have your own cousin slain after discovering the salt crystal veins. I hope you aren't expecting an apology. Have we not usurped the same throne? I have not asked you here to discuss the past, but the future. I am certain you understand that taking on Hyzant alone is a fool's errand. We must unite if we are to stand a chance. And you expect me to believe that one of the saintly seven wishes to defeat the holy state itself? We must prevent Hyzant from gaining complete control over Salt and consequently Norzelia. I even parted from a dear friend over it. I see. I have no objections to overthrowing Hyzant. Then let us begin the negotiations. Silence. I am here to speak with King Serenoa, not his servant. I have given Benedict full rights to be here. Consider his words my own. Hmm. So the bird did not break free after all. His vassal opened the cage door. Very well then. But allow me to make this clear. If you wish for an alliance, you will give me the salt crystal veins. They belong to Esfrost for having discovered them in the first place. We cannot do that. Then we have nothing to discuss. Pray answer me this, Archduke. What do you intend to do with the salt? People need salt to live. But here in Norzelia, it is owned entirely by Hyzant and the Consortium. Their high taxes make it nearly impossible for some to obtain. Once I defeat Hyzant, I will abolish both that abhorrent Consortium and its taxes and allow free trade throughout the land. I would ensure that any who desire salt receive their fair share of it. That would make you the only one with control over salt. It is no different than Hyzant now. I do not covet riches like they do. Under my rule, the people would have salt. They would finally have freedom. This is the only future before us. I beg to differ. We intend to make salt available to all. Anyone will be able to obtain as much as they like for a modest price. You would put control of salt in the hands of the people? To what end? To change the world with the potential residing within every grain of salt. For example, preserving foods with salt would make life and trade more prosperous than ever before. Using salt in leather and glass crafting could create newer and better goods. Farmers could give it to their livestock, and it could also be used in various medicines. It can even be used in explosives. How do you know about that? These are but a handful of examples. If we give the people access to salt, there is no telling how many other uses they may find. Norzelia will enter a golden age of prosperity, and her people will thrive like never before. I did not take you for an idealist. I think we both know that the people lack the intelligence for innovation. They just haven't been afforded the chance, but with the proper mechanisms in place, they can be taught. I have already started work on a plan to make salt available over the course of several years. Do not underestimate the people's greed. It won't be long before they turn on their rulers, intoxicated by the power of salt. The very nation you sought to defeat feared the same, and sought to control them with their goddess's might. Hmm. Archduke Gusadolf, I do not fear a free people. I wish to lead them, but will fight if I must. That is why I took this throne. I believe anyone who wishes to rule the new Norzelia should be prepared to do the same. Tell me this. 
How did you know Salt possesses such potential? And I would ask you in return, were you unaware of it yourself? It was all written in a book Lord Dragan gave us. It is the result of his extensive research at the Asfrosti Archives. Dragan. You mean to say it was the knowledge of one of my own? Had I made him Prime Minister, our positions would be reversed. So this is my punishment for seeing him killed. Very well. Consider me interested in the future House Wolfort sees for this world. As the Archduke of Esfrost, I hereby swear my allegiance to your cause. You have our thanks, Archduke Gustav. It is only a matter of time until Hyzant realizes what we are planning. Let us proceed to the War Council. Lead the way. Glenbrook and Esfrost have entered into an alliance. You and I are enemies no longer. I am glad to hear it. Thank you for joining our cause. Together, we will strike down Hyzant. For the Roselle as well. I am sure your mother would have been happy to hear it. Indeed. Frederica, do you resent me for attacking House Wolfort? I have come to an understanding of what you hoped to accomplish. Your duties as Archduke outweigh your personal desires. Precisely. I have no regrets for what I've done. Neither do I regret standing against you, or slaying Erika and Thallis. Not because I harbor personal grudges against any of you, but because my eyes must look not to the past, but to the future. King Serenoa said the same earlier. It should come as no surprise, Archduke Gustadolf. He and I walk the same path, hand in hand. You've grown strong, Frederica. The Kingdom of Glenbrook and the Duchy of Esfrost enter an alliance. Their combined forces led by Serenoa. Together, they set out to strike down the holy state of Hyzant. Sensing their movements, the Desert Nation summons Exham soldiers home from their march on the Grand Nozellian Mines to prepare for the arrival of the Allied forces. Though the walls around the Holy State have kept it safe for many years, it is now up to Benedict to discern how best to penetrate the Goddess's shield. Benedict, have you finalized our plan of attack against Hyzant? I have. We shall shatter the Goddess's shield with Esfrost's death snell. We can then storm the capital and take Hyzant. However, there is one problem that remains. Transporting, placing, and firing the weapon will take a considerable amount of time. So we must draw the Hyzantian army's attention away from the cannon until it is ready. But they might confine themselves to their castle rather than come out and fight us. We must draw them out. We cannot allow them the opportunity to calmly scout about. Buying time against Minister Exham's forces won't be easy. The damage will be great, even if we do succeed. Esfrost cannot hope to triumph alone. Which is why I have measures in place to ensure our victory. Anna, did you send the letter like I asked? Yes. I sent an unsigned message to Minister Tenebris. It included details of his and Sorsley's illicit salt trade and their profitable underground arena. 
I also added that we would report it to the Holy One, and enclosed a copy of the evidence I gathered. Perfect. Tenebris will fear for his position and desperately look for any way to establish himself worthy of his seat. And what of Claris? As predicted, he has returned to Hyzant. Claris was master of the underground arena, and Tenebris his bookmaker. Now the merchant needs someone in his corner, and the saint needs a pawn. With nowhere left to go, the two will join forces and be the ones to throw Hyzant's strategy into disarray. They will do anything to defeat House Wolford. I see. We should be able to buy time against their improvised army. But there is no guarantee it will work. One last letter should be all the push that Tenebris needs. Another letter? Signed by Prince Roland, asking for his aid in destroying House Wolfort, who stole his throne. It lays out a plan in which Prince Roland will attack us from behind with his own army, while we fight Tenebris in front. What? There is no reason for him to doubt it. I forged his handwriting and sealed it with the royal band. But how? I made an imprint of his ring when I took it to fake his death. I thought it might come in handy someday. Benedict. Everyone knows of Prince Roland and King Serenoa's disagreement. If Tenebris thinks he has a chance of winning, he will take it. Even if the odds aren't in his favor. I understand. But does King Serenoa know? No, he does not. He would not forgive me for using Prince Roland as such. This was entirely my cunning. King Serenoa. I heard everything. Your plan gives us the greatest chance of victory. I hereby order you to see it through. Are you certain? I am certain there is no going back for us. Only forward. As you command. His decision made, Serenoa marches toward Hyzant, certain a victorious end will justify even the most underhanded means. A letter, forged with his old friend's name, arrives in the Holy State, and all the pieces begin to move according to Benedict's plan. I see. So House Wolfort seeks to destroy not only Hyzant, but the Consortium as well. Yes. They would bring ruin to the Order of Norzelia we worked so hard to build. Minister Tenebris, you must have the Holy One strike them down. But of course, House Wolfort must be punished for defying the Goddess. Were that I able to chasten them with my own hands? Alas, I am unfit to command. But you, Lord Claris, are a master at assembling the mercenaries and ruffians in the underground arena. It is only natural for a merchant to have knowledge of battle. He must protect his wares at all costs. How heartening it is to hear you say that. Now I am certain there is no other who could fulfill my request. Lord Claris, I wish for you to serve me and ride to battle against House Wolfort. You may leave the issue of troops to me. You wish for me to command your soldiers? Our odds are more favorable than you think. You see, 
I received a letter from a certain someone not days ago. Let us defeat the usurpers of House Wolfort together. Signed by King Roland himself. King Roland? Truly? It has the seal of the royal family. I have confirmed it myself to be true. So King Roland really was overthrown. Were I in his shoes, I would also want revenge against such traitors. He also wrote that he will spring a surprise attack from behind during the battle. Oh, with King Roland on our side, House Wolfort won't stand a chance against us. Have you spoke to anyone else of this, Minister Tenebris? No. You are the only one I wish to share this victory with. I am happy to hear it. I will do all I can in your service. When you said you would gather the troops, I had not expected cavalry, Minister Tenebris. It was the least I could do to ensure our victory. I leave them in your charge, Lord Claris. Once you defeat Warfort, a seat among the Saintly Seven will be left open. And I think none more fitting for that place as the Minister of Salt than you, Lord Claris. You flatter me, Minister Tenebris. I think your deeds this day may earn you the position of Minister Edor. <laughs> yes, with this victory I can erase the sins of my past. House Wolfort is coming his way. Are you sure you needn't any aid, Mr. Tenebris? I know you wish to lead the vanguard, but... House Wolfort is not to be underestimated. Worry not, Minister Exham. I have given Lord Claris a certain path to victory. Yes, you may rest easy. Understood. Then I leave it to you. Let us watch Lord Claris triumph over House Wolfort together. Pray for your victory. Even should you lose, the goddess's shield will protect us. Archduke Gustadolf and Lord Svarog's armies have left with the cannon. They should be able to sneak around the city's southern side and make the necessary preparations. And let us make our move too. Finally, I'm ready for a fight. Do not forget, our objective is to draw the enemy's eyes to us and stall for time. I know, I know. We'll draw their forces to the western side of the shield, while Esfrost readies the cannon to the south. And after they blast through the wall, we pour in and take the palace. Right? Exactly. We must be cautious. King Serenella, please speak with the soldiers before we depart. Hearing their commander's words will no doubt raise their spirits. I shall.
House Wolfort, you will rue the day you spurned me. Cavalry, prepare to charge. The vanguard is led by Claris of the Consortium. We managed to avoid a battle with their main forces, as intended. Indeed, but their numbers are greater than I anticipated. Unfortunately so. But Claris anticipates Roland coming to his aid, and has likely let his guard down. This is a perfect chance to call Hyzant's numbers. With all due respect, Your Majesty. I know. I shan't let my guard down. This is the first battle of the war. We must demonstrate our might not only to Hyzant, but Esfrost as well. Benedict, let the soldiers know of this battle's import. I shall. Warriors of Wolfort, listen well. This is more than a battle against the holy state of Hyzant. This is a battle against their salt monopoly, their teachings, their consortium. This is a battle against everything that keeps Norzelia chained to the past. This battle will carve the way to a new era, one where we all have salt and all are free. And the leader of that new era will be none other than King Saranoa. Now, draw your swords. For a new Norzelia, for his majesty, King Saranoa. For Norzelia! Soldiers, advance! Strike down the vanguard! I shall put an end to House Wolfort's arrogance here and now. They will repent for stealing the throne. Won't those fools be surprised to see who has joined our side? <laughs> Claris looks awfully confident. That can only mean he's fallen into Benedict's trap. But we mustn't get cocky. We are up against the Hyzantian cavalry. No! Time to work. Ah, right then. <laughs> now what to do? Defeat is not an option. There is no mercy on the battlefield. There is always a way. Time to take flight! Ha! Victory is ours! To work!
gotcha. You won't beat me! I shall do what I can. I'll take it from here. Let me show you what I've learned. Blaze, heed my call! What to do? What to do? My turn. Ha! Victory is within reach! Strike. Choices, choices. <laughs> Dance poison. That must have hurt. Not an option. This ends here. You're open. It's for life. Here I come. Goodbye. I will fight to my last breath. King Volin's army will arrive any moment now. I'll take you on! Rah! Look at me learning. You are so naive. I shall do what I can. My growth is plain to see. Strike while the iron's hot. Let us pry out their weakness. for victory. You have my thanks. Let's go then. You're done for! <laughs> ah, right then. Let me show you what I've learned. Two ashes. 
for a better world. Your orders? For a fool, and lost my composure. I no longer deserve the title of merchant. So this is the end of our era. I am pleased to report that Clarissa's army has been defeated. Good. Now the enemy will concentrate all their power on us. Benedict, please rest. There are no signs of the enemy nearby. They remain wary, watching us from afar. There is no time to rest. I concur. Minister Exham's army is likely our next opponent. We must prepare to intercept them. Please wait, Your Majesty. Benedict has barely slept since Prince Roland's departure, even if just a moment. Anna, our feint is not yet finished. We haven't the leisure of resting. I will be ready shortly. Good. Anna, help Benedict. Yes, sir. Looks like it was too big a task for Clarus after all. It shouldn't have ended like this. King Roland was meant to attack from behind. King Roland? What are you talking about? I received a letter from His Majesty asking us to strike at House Wolfort together. A fraud without a doubt, likely sent by the strategist Benedict. No, it cannot be. It was sealed with the royal band. That tactician could even forge the royal seal if he wanted to. And one truly hoping to strike down Wolfort would not beseech a man so incompetent as you for help. Yet they did. And you believed them without a second thought. But I... Now Glenbrook has successfully taken the initiative. I care not if Clarice perished. The loss of so many cavalry is a hard blow to our forces. Please, Minister Edor, give me a chance to make this right. You have failed. Do you really think you deserve a second chance? Minister Tenebris, I should let you know you were not the only one to receive a letter in secret. But the one I have claims you were involved in trading illicit salt and operating an underground arena for profit. Please, forgive me. That is for the Holy One to decide. The Hierophant must know of this turn of events. Let us return to the palace together. Minister Exam, I leave the city's protection in your capable hands. Understood. I shall crush House Wolfort. May the Goddess be with you. Esfrost's cannon is a new weapon devised to destroy the goddess's shield, the ramparts that protect the Hyzantian capital. Readying the cannon, however, takes time. The dangerous duty of distracting Hyzant's forces long enough to take aim and fire falls upon House Wolfort.
Benedict uses his cunning to divert Minister Tenebris and the Merchant Claris, successfully drawing the enemy forces away from their target. Fares the campaign, Minister Edor. The Wolford forces felled our vanguard. Ah, uh, I am unsurprised. Minister Exham or myself really ought to have accompanied them. Have mercy. Please. I am sorry. You acted foolishly, Minister Tenebris. But Wolford is not easily defeated, even by wiser men. Our dear Minister Exam has had his own fair share of troubles, as capable as he has proven himself thus far. And he never loses a battle. Is House Wolfort truly so formidable a foe? Indeed. All thanks to that conniving tactician of theirs. Well then, we should send the soldiers stationed around the capital to Minister Exham's aid. No. We do that, and we leave ourselves vulnerable. Any enemy that dares attack us will break upon the goddess's shield. Right now, our highest priority must be Walfort's sound defeat. Agreed. Still, we do not want to leave ourselves completely defenseless. Minister Lila, you know what preparations must be made. You cannot mean to use the automaton. <laughs> Not unless the situation grows desperate. Minister Tenebris will aid you, of course. Of... of course. Wolfert's forces have defeated our soldiers on the shield's western rampart. No! Impossible! Calm yourself. We still have the goddess's shield and the saintly seven's core to protect us. Minister Exham himself is about to sally forth with the bulk of his forces. The shield's soldiers are to rally at the western rampart and support Minister Exham from there. Understood. Quickly now! Perfect. Now we'll be able to ready the cannon with our enemy none the wiser. I must report back to the Archduke at House Wolfort. Lord Serenoa, may I speak with you? About that noblewoman, yes? Eridor's told me what happened. Forgive me. I know that I should have waited for your orders before acting. But I could not leave that woman to her devices. The longer the war goes on, the more the people suffer. I imagine their feelings toward their rulers must be souring. In spite of this, that woman tried to use your name to wrest their food away. Had we let her go free, people would have thought she was acting on your orders, and their mistrust of you would have only grown. I believed we had to show them that soldiers stand for justice and acted. I accept whatever punishment you deem fit. There will be no punishment, for you have committed no wrong. My lord. Anna looked into her. It seems that woman's ill repute dates back to her days in Glenbrook. Likely, she thought to obfuscate her misdeeds in the Crown City by hiding within my troops. But she wasn't able to conceal her true self in the end. I suppose she thought to earn my favor with the stolen food. Unfortunately for her, she misjudged my principles. Lord Serenoa. 
forgive me for my oversight in this matter. I shall take all necessary precautions to ensure nothing like it happens again. So you aren't upset with me for throwing a noble woman in jail? Had I been in your position, I would have done the very same. For her misdeeds in Glenbrook and the crime you caught her committing, I shall order her banished at once. She will never again be welcome in the Wolfort Domain. Let it serve as a deterrent to any others who would prey upon the common people. It is rare that I meet someone so committed to holding those of high birth accountable for their actions. I hope you will continue to do so. House Wolfort must be a house the people can trust. Of course, my lord. You have my word. I knew I made the right choice. Unlike Patriot, Lord Serenoa is a man worth serving. Yes, I finally found where I am meant to be. I cannot rest on my laurels. Yes. I must serve my new lord as best I can. So, Exam's army shows itself. What of the Nell, Benedict? Our scouts say the diversion is succeeding, but it won't hold for much longer. <sighs> then we need more time. Minister Exham is not like the other saintly seven. We might parley with him. An approach worth exploring, with prudence, of course. I regret reuniting under these circumstances, Minister Exam. Explain yourself, Minister Saranoa. You are one of the saintly seven, yet you dare raise arms against Hysat. The people have suffered long enough under the Holy State's salt monopoly. I cannot sit idly by and let Norselia be chained by such tyranny. <laughs> A pretty speech. But what you really mean is you seek to reign supreme instead of the Holy One. Isn't that right? <sighs> and what if it is? Should he be ashamed? The people deserve to be ruled by a man with conviction, not some corrupt hierophant or an idolatrous faith. Ah, so you are the one pulling these strings. I know you have your own misgivings about Hyzad's rule, Minister. Would you truly be so opposed to working with us to make Norzelia a better place? A better Norzelia, you say? I've always held you in high esteem. I would be lying if I said I had no interest in seeing what you envision for our realm. Then we need not fight. Let us be allies. No. It is true that I do not believe what Hysant is doing is right. I wish to loosen the stranglehold the Goddess and her teachings have across our land. Then why refuse me? Because I have no desire to rely on you nor anyone else. I will change the world myself, or not at all. I have all the strength and wit I require to defeat my enemies and rule Morselia. But I cannot prove that. I deign to use others as a crutch. Then you care nothing for the realm or her people, but your pride alone. In short, yes. You cannot tell me you do not feel likewise. <sighs> we have nothing more to discuss. If you will not be persuaded, then let us pit your ambition against our conviction and see which is stronger. It would be my pleasure. A battle to prove which of us is more fit to rule Norzelia. Everything rests on crushing him, Benedict. We must show no mercy. As you command.
a battle of conviction and ambition. But from where I stand, you are ambition incarnate. No matter, to the victor go the spoils. We'll see just how strong your convictions are when I crush you, Saranoa Wolfort. My convictions shan't fail me. If you think you can crush me, go ahead and try. Your orders? You won't catch me. I shall try my level best. All for victory. Splendid. Let's go then. Come on! That's it! We're here to assist you. Guards of the Southern Ramparts. A welcome sight indeed. The enemy stands no chance against your might. How do you like that? I will follow you faithfully till the end. Allow me. Two ashes. For a better world. Shall we begin? You won't 
don't know up from down. This'll come in handy. Dance poison. That must have hurt. Uh. For the honor of House Wolfort. Flight. Yeah. Ah. You are not worthy of my time. You aren't fool enough to believe you can take the shield with that paltry force, are you? All shall yield before me. Try my level best. There is always a way. For the future of House Wolfort. For the honor of House Wolfort. Now I end this. To lead, I must grow. To work. Gotcha. Oh. Come at me. Come on. Perks don't. Now's my chance. Look at me learning. Shall we begin? I'm behind you. My thanks. I'll take it from here. Allow me. With the powers in me. I will end this. Ha! Victory is within reach. Victory is within reach. Impossible. I'm a fool. Back at you. My limits. 
No. I am better than this. Stronger. I see a path to victory. This should do. Splendid. My turn. Uh. Hello, uh. me. Uh. Too slow. Uh. My strength fails me. Fight's not over, if I'm not dead. Face me if you dare, Sarah Noah Wolfort. Our battle is done, Minister Exham. Surely you understand that. <sighs> Have I lost my touch? Strength and wit ought both have been on my side. Perhaps. But I have something greater on mine. Loyal companions who stand with me. Alone, I might not have stood a chance against you. But together, House Wolfort prevailed. <laughs> Is that right? Collecting skilled retainers and using them to your advantage. So, that is what separates us. No. We are the same, you and I. My lord, they are about to fire the cannon. We must hasten south and join with the Esfrosty forces. And south we shall go. Let us end this war once and for all. The cannon is ready, your grace. You need only give the command to fire. Good. And the enemy has yet to notice us as we maneuver into place. Wolfhold is proving themselves a decent distraction. A most capable house indeed. <laughs> but we cannot let them steal all the glory. Soon they will see what we are capable of. Get the cannon in position to fire at the goddess's shield. Yes, your grace. Aim cannon! Yes, sir! In position! Fire! The cannon blasts through the goddess's shield as easily as iron through flesh. House Wolfort and the Asfrosty forces converge south of the capital. With their way in secured, they set their sights on the palace. Thus the stage for the battle's final act is set. Archduke Gustadolf. King Serenno. Frederica. Thanks to your fine diversion, we succeeded in blasting our way in as planned. The 
goddess's shield crumbled in a single blow. That cannon is a fearsome weapon. We use the explosives Dragan invented. They were originally devised for mining, after all. I pray we shall use them only for that purpose in the future. Indeed. I have no desire to see wars waged with these weapons on both sides. With the goddess's shield destroyed, the enemy will be preparing to flee. We must make haste to the palace. You shall go no further! Minister Kamsel, Minister Lila, didn't take them long to reach us. The saintly seven are formidable foes indeed. We'll handle them, King Serenoa. You should make for the palace. Very well. No traitor shall set foot upon the palace grounds while we yet live. Then it seems your death is at hand. After them! Do not let them reach the palace! We must keep Wolfort's path clear! It's Frosty! Charge! The goddess's shield has been breached! Hyzant is doomed! Calm yourself, Minister Tenebris. Have you no faith in the goddess? Do you not believe she will protect us? No, I mean... Yes, but... Have you had a chance to atone for your sins yet? No, not yet. I would do anything to be absolved. Then you are in luck. I have a very special role for you. A command from the very lips of the Holy One. The, the Holy One? Come, Minister Tenebris. I truly worthy of such an honor? That, I think, remains to be seen. You are to escort the Holy One to face the insurgents. To face them? In battle? Why? So they may suffer the wrath of the Goddess, of course. Oh, Holy One! Let us gaze upon your countenance. What is this? Minister Tenebris. Who is that woman with him? <laughs> Serenoa Wolfort. The blame rests at your feet. Your meddling forced me into this position. Let us pass peacefully and you will come to no harm. You speak as if I have a choice. Unless every last rebel is killed, Minister Edor will kill me. Killing all of us is beyond even your capabilities. <laughs> he did not charge me with your executions. The Holy One will see to that. All I had to do was escort her here. That woman is the Holy One? I cannot say. None have actually seen the Holy One in the flesh.
<laughs> then you understand what an honor this is to witness not only her true form, but her true power. Suffer the wrath of the goddess! What are you doing? Run! What power is this? This destruction, this light, it's just like the Elfric. Lord Serenoa, I am not sure how it is possible, but I believe she has absorbed the power of the blast crystals. Is such a thing even possible? No, not for a human. Are you saying the Holy One is not human? We must retreat. No, Lord Serenoa. Huh? I do not deny we face an enemy unlike any we have faced before. But to withdraw now will allow Hyzant to recover its strength. I thought you believed in what the Salt promises. I thought you were resolved to do whatever it takes to forge a better Norzelia. The future is as strange and frightening as any foe. How can you be brave enough to change one when you flee in terror from the other? Be not afraid to fight for your chosen path, Lord Serenoa. We will fight beside you every step of the way. You speak true, Benedict. Take up your arms, my friends. We will strike down this so-called Holy One and Hyzant Wither! My friends, the final battle is upon us. We face a foe like none we've ever faced, but fear has no place in our hearts. We are the light that guides Norzelia out of the darkness and into a new dawn. I will end this. Think you can catch me? What was the old man thinking creating something like this? Come, let me put you out of your misery. Dance poison! That must have hurt. Ever more lovely. Ah! You are so naive. You are so naive. The hunt is on. Yes. 
Defeat is not an option. Death from above! We doing this? Let us pry out their weakness. There is always a way. My knowledge grows deeper. So this is the manner of creature that blocks Lord Saranoa and Benedict's path. Whatever enemies I must face, I will fulfill my duty. You will not stop me for long! You won't escape. Suffer. For life. I'll take you on! Show me what you're made of! Let me heal your wounds. This is what I do. Thank you. It's one step closer to our hope. Time to take action. You've got this! Splendid. I fight for peace. With the powers in me. Where shall we strike? Not so fast. Must 
find a way. My turn. That seemed to work. Your Highness! I'll take you on! I struck true. Shall we begin? Secret research the Ministry conducted was to create this abomination. A monster in human skin. To what end did Heizen create such a thing? Whatever it takes. You're finished! I will follow you faithfully till the end. I fight for peace. With the powers in me. Ready. <laughs> now what to do? Dance poison! That must have hurt. Your orders? You won't escape. Just for you. That must have hurt. You will escape. creature was that? An automaton, or so I am told. Archduke Gustadolf, you survived. Naturally, Kemsel is dead. What remains of Hyzant's forces have surrendered. An automaton, you are told. By whom? A captured soldier. I can't believe you struck down the Holy One. Something tells me this spells the end for Hyzant, and the teachings of the Goddess both. Then that... thing was truly the Holy One. Yes, I built her myself, under Edor's orders. An artificial Hierophant, brought to life by the power of Elfric. Why would he order the construction of such an odious thing? With an immortal Holy One as powerful as the Goddess herself, Hyzant could ensure the longevity of its faith. So Edor claimed. But in truth, she was meant to be nothing more than a soulless puppet. A tool Edor could use to bend Hyzant to his own will. Hyzant was supposed to be a land under the Goddess's protection, where people could live freely and equally. To think it was ruled by an empty doll this entire time. An absurd revelation indeed, but one that will cause the goddesses faithful to break with Hyzant when they learn of it. I expect they will be much more inclined to join us after the war. And the Roselle? 
Do you think this will put an end to the prejudice against them? Ostensibly. There is still the Puppet Master himself to contend with. We must make for the palace and capture him. It is doubtful we will find Edor there. I expect he deployed the Holy One to buy himself time to escape. That is the kind of man he has always been. <sighs> With Hyzant fallen, he is not but a powerless old fool. There is nothing he can do, no matter where he flees. Victory is ours, King Serenor. I suppose it is. The battle for the Hyzantian capital draws to a victorious close for the Allied armies. Minister Lila, last of the Saintly Seven, signs her name to a peace treaty, effectively ending Hyzant's salt monopoly. The effects of this momentous occasion will ripple through all of Norzelia. With the Holy One's true identity revealed, the power of the Goddess's teachings crumbles, and the Roselle are freed from their enslavement at the Source. But their long enslavement and the stubborn prejudices against them make it difficult for many to start a new life. Still bound in the fetters of their suffering, they find themselves scattered throughout the realm. Meanwhile, Glenbrook and Esfrost join forces to abolish the consortium and salt taxes. They order the Grand Norzelian mines to open to the populace, giving people near and far access to the salt crystals. With the various applications of salt also made public, several laws are enacted to support merchants whose enterprise involves the mineral. When the people realize the new opportunities available to them, they rush to take advantage of them. For his hand in opening doors that had once been closed, Serenoa Wolfort's subjects admiringly refer to him as King Serenoa the Liberator. And so, a new era of freedom comes to pass. An era where any may access the salt needed to better their future. Of booming trade and flourishing industry, Norzelia is reborn as a land where the power rests with her people. And yet, the gap between the haves and the have-nots grows ever wider. It is an era of great wealth, hand in hand with terrible poverty. The more some prosper, the more many suffer. Lady Destra, with each hard-won victory he claimed, your son transformed our realm. Now he presides over all of Norzelia, powerful and peerless. I have no regrets. All there is left for me to do is atone for the way I used Lord Serenoa. This is the last time I shall intrude upon your rest. You will not take your life on my watch, Benedict. Lord Serenoa, what are you doing here? Did you not hear me? Preventing you from making a grave mistake? I need you by my side. No, you don't. I am no more than a wretch who used you for his own gain. I cared nothing for what would befall Norzelia or her people. I even deposed Prince Roland for my own selfish purposes. It was vengeance upon King Regna and Lord Simon for the way they treated Lady Destra like an object, and upon myself for being powerless. All I wanted was to clear my conscience for being unable to help her all those years ago. All I wanted, more than anything, was Lady Destra's good favor. To hear her tell me I'd done well. You've done well, Benedict. Huh? I understand how you're feeling, truly. 
for I feel it too. My wish to shepherd Norzelia and her people to an era of peace is genuine. But before the entire continent became my responsibility, I wanted only to prove myself worthy of the title of Lord Wolfort. That is the reason I have come this far. My mother and father, Roland and Frederica, my retainers, and you, Benedict. Everything I have done, I have done to prove myself to all of you. Lord Serenoa. What awaits our realm is anyone's guess. As one who paved the path we now follow, I must keep fighting to ensure we do not falter. So tell me, Benedict, am I not a man worthy of your assistance? There is none more worthy in all the realm. So long as there is breath in my lungs, my lord, I will do all I can to help you. And several new salt crystal deposits have been discovered. I see. We should tell the people what we know. All of it. If we do that, we'll drown in the flood of traders who come seeking mining permits from every corner of the realm. I expect so. Huet, I am trusting you to keep a sharp eye on the contracts and make sure everything is in order. Of course, my lord. couldn't have planned this better. Salt Reliant Trades will prosper even more now. Your Majesty, I've caught the criminal that robbed and murdered those salt merchants. The man's a Rizelin, who lives in Old Town. He confessed to the deed, saying he did it to feed his family. Another criminal out of Old Town? And a Rizelin on top of that? Old towns fall into squalor and poverty. There must be something we can do to turn things around. This isn't an isolated incident, Your Majesty. If we do nothing to help the impoverished, I'm afraid these crimes of desperation will only keep happening. Prejudice against the Roselle is alive and well. It forces many of them into hard, cruel lives. There must be something we can do to alleviate their suffering. There are systems in place to help the poor find work, and an edict forbidding discrimination against the Roselle. But we cannot show them any further favoritism. They are not the only ones struggling to survive right now. Very well. Murder is a grievous sin, even if it is done in the name of one's family. Execute the Rosellan for his crimes. It shall be done. A new day is dawning upon our realm, Frederica. If we are to earn the people's trust in this time of upheaval, we must hold everyone accountable to the law equally. Yes, Your Majesty. I will earn all of your trust. This I swear on Roland's name. I will make Norzelia a better place. To that end, I will fight until my dying breath. Admit the next petitioner. I'm sorry. Today's food supplies are exhausted. I shall bring more on the morrow. Please, brother. 
You're the only thing between us and ruin. I swear, we shall not forsake you. Try to stay strong. More of them seek our aid by the day. We need more bread, or we'll never be able to feed them all. Meanwhile, merchants and nobles in the Crown City grow fat off their salt profits. Food isn't the only thing we lack. We need clothes, beds, medicine. It's but a matter of time until this rundown quarter is overrun with plague. Someone help me! I've got you, friend. You're all right. Oh, my lord! This is where you've been. <clears throat> Pray see me to my rest. You have such beautiful eyes. Rest in peace. I hear them. My lord? I hear them, loud and clear. The cries of people shoved out to margins of this new Norzelia. Soft as rain now, but soon. Soon they will be a tempest. One that will rage across all the land. Do you hear them, Saranoa? Their voices... and mine. <laughs> 